Thanks for staying with us. So today our hot topic um, is from the DSP Bright Edafe, the P P R O of Delta State um, Police Command in Delta State, and he had tweeted saying that a father defiled his seven-year-old daughter, and uh, and it was the mother of the girl, who is also the wife of the father, who came begging and crying for the husband to be released because the punishment is life imprisonment and she cannot raise um, the children alone. Trust, according to him, he says, trust my boss, he vehemently declined her request. And this is something I know Nima has always said, things like this happen where um, there's a case of defilement, rape um, um, on ground, and then the perpetrator is let go because family are saying, let's make it a play. Let, let's, let's resolve it amicably amongst the family, or is our, is our breadwinner, or is our loved one, is our family. Let, let's not... Let's let's um let's find a way to resolve it. Let's not wash home. dirty linen. Let's not wash our dirty linens out there. You know, we see this all the time, it happens. And um when we see this kind of case, especially when a PPR comes out to tweet on it, obviously he has a case at hand which is which is um similar to this case. The thing is it's an opportunity for us to once again highlight the importance of um communal um uh, communal involvement in, in these kind of situations, especially in, child, in, in cases of rape and defilement, molestation of minors, um, the role of being Mrs. Somebody and protecting this institution called marriage at all costs. And it's something that many women, Nigerian women, are raised with to say, listen, whatever you do, just protect that your marriage. And in protecting their marriage, they are willing to allow a defilement of a child go uncovered mm -hmm. or swept under the carpet to protect that. And that's something I think we need to, is worthy of uh, our conversation. Please call us on the numbers on your screen, 0810 You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweet. We all know this is like an open and short conversation, but it's always important to bring it again because it's almost, there are all various factors you think educated people would know better. Mm. But the truth is that all levels, educated, uneducated, exposed, on it, we, we all, when it comes to issues of protecting this thing called marriage, it's like all our sense of reasoning goes off, flies off the roof, and we're all about how do I ensure that the world doesn't laugh at me mm. in this kind of situation. So how do we mm. begin to talk about these things? The PRO is uh, neglecting a very important element in this the fact that this is not an empowered mother. She is someone who needs help to raise other kids. And she is forced to accept less, lesser evil or lesser hardship. Life with, without him or life with him and uh, help to raise the kids. So that's one important part that in our social law making system we should be looking at. I know the Child Rights Act is strict on this. The, this is a clear case of life imprisonment if he's, if he's convicted. But what are the provisions for dependence when it is done to dependence? Yeah. So what will she do with her kids? How will the system help her so that she doesn't need an evil? Need to live with such an evil. If, if, I, if I must raise my kids, okay, let me accept what he is. No, she, if she must stand up against it, she must be provided something to fall back on when it comes to the dependence that she has. Maybe, I don't know how many kids she has in this story, but she certainly has other kids she needs to raise. What is the system doing for that? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's one point, but I beg to differ because we've seen wealthy people who would rather choose their husband mm. over their child that has been defiled. So it has yes, nothing this to particular do. Case yes, I know, I know, but, but see, a woman who will choose this, whether it's poverty or not, is not what is in her head. She is thinking first of, how do I allow this man that I am married to go to prison for life? What am I going to do with this child? It's not about how do I care for the child. You're not even paying attention to the emotional needs of the child and how damaged the child is. You're thinking, how am I able to fend for the child? Or what will I do with the child? How will I now relate with this child? Because at the end of the day, what happens is that the woman begins to hate the child and starts blaming the child for what has happened. So it has nothing to do with money. Now, I understand your part where the government needs to, like in other countries where they have a, a welfare system, where they cannot put the children to be catered for. We don't have that yet. But I'm going beyond the mindset of, I have money, I don't have money. I've seen a wealthy uh, person who 
This sort of thing happened in her home. And all she did to the police was, please, whatever we can, we'll pay to kill this case. They didn't even allow the case to come out. Mm. We'll kill this case. I will handle my daughter. I would have my daughter. And what happened after how many years was that she started blaming. In fact, the child had to run away from the house because she was blaming the child for what the man had done in the name of preserving marriage. I think women need to wake up. Wake up. You cannot birth a child and allow such an evil damage a child. And you are more concerned about protecting your image in the society as a wife. Eh? As a married woman, marriage is back dear. You have failed that child. Your first responsibility, and I tell people that are looking to get married and give birth, is to protect your children for as long as you can before they are out of your hands. Now, if you fail in that, you must own up to that responsibility that I have failed in this. It's even possible that this thing, they didn't just find it out though. Don't it has been sense. happening and she was aware. But her marriage was more important to her than paying attention and trying to help that child. And that's why we commended that, uh, which case did we have here? A few, Dr. Femi or something. Femi. Yes. Commended the wife for speaking up because women, this has been happening and women hardly ever speak up. Their marriage and their husband and their love or whatever it is they're getting out of, the kicks they're getting out of it is more important to them than the welfare of their children. We need to wake up. I have handled cases like this in the past where a woman comes in and she is the one abused by her husband. She is not empowered. When she sees the option the system gives, which is just punitive, you know, the system provides punitive measures to deter such reoccurrences, but not a home or something for her to help her deal with it. So Dr. Femi's wife is one unique woman. She's one in 10 million. Sure. She's a woman who is empowered, educated, and, you know, she's bold. Not every woman is in that position. I'm not holding brief and excusing these things, but I've seen it happen, and I'm trying to make sense of it every day. So I did a case for a woman, pro bono. We were halfway through, and she just backed out and yeah. asked me, are you going to take care of my children? Are you going to, you're asking me, if they lock him or they sack him from, so are you going to, and the way she went on me, Initially, I was angry. I walked out. I was like, you wasted my time. You made me, you know, because it was a waste of my time. But when I went back, beyond helping her prosecute that matter, I had nothing else for her. And so that alone was why I just, you know, with time, it, it didn't make sense initially. But in two years, it made sense that I could not have done more than that. So maybe she should carry her cross. So this is why I'm explaining this. We have, we have this platform so that we, when we create systems, what um, Governor Fashola did as governor then when he established the sexual offenders register was take it a step beyond so that the system will know names you know we just we have systems we don't have it and overall it, it, it's stronger system except for yeah. lagos i don't know what delta state has so you punish the man he goes for life sentence and then his children and the wife you, you leave them in that situation. What you have is that the wife will constantly, because, you know, this thing doesn't happen yeah. immediately. And to also, find closure, she might just be looking at the child, that, ah, maybe the day they are suffering or something hard, she, harder yeah. is happening. She'll look at the child, the innocent child who has been abused. But when the system takes care of it all, that child is doing well, all her kids are doing well. Let me come to right exact, here also, because uh, the British issue of punished. societal labeling, oh, that's the woman that sent her husband to jail. That's the woman that... Uh, went to go and uh, her husband is in life, life imprisonment because women, we of, you, know, you know how the society is going to judge and they label women. And women have, they have, they have, they, they have, they, they, they have trouble dealing with those kind of labels on them. And that's why people try to preserve the lie and try to manage the lie. You know, let me just manage that. This nobody knows. You know, they say something in Yoruba, Ashiria Bo, let's, let's just, cover, just yourself. cover yourself, cover your sins. So in your view, Society has always labeled people. How do you think we can move away from this labeling? Because that's part of what is disempowering these women from speaking up. Hmm. That's a very tough question you have thrown at me. <laughs> uh, it's true because, really, the society we live in, they judge you for everything. Everything, for breathing. Ah. <laughs> you, 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 do, you, you step like this, they, they, judge. they judge you. You step like that. They, so... It now comes to you are the one that jailed your husband. I mean, you think uh, Dr. Femi's wife, people are not abusing her? Of course, plenty. They're abusing her now. Even but his she... mother abused her during the trial. Mm -hmm. 
Even his mother turned on her during the oh. trial. You know, so it's, I, I would say, you know, because I've said here that, for, like, for this kind of poor woman, we need, like, the, that human affair, woman affairs. I mean, women affairs. Women affairs. We need them. We, we don't need those kind of ministries. We need real social welfare, social welfare yeah. for people. That, that is what we women need. Women so that children. You don't have a job, you can register, mm -hmm. and then you are being taken care of. You are there, they're looking for a job for you. They are, Education, your child's education is being paid, free schooling. We need that kind of thing. Until we start to do things properly, this kind of thing will, will happen. Will happen. Mm. She will go and beg for her husband, who will continue to defy the child if they release him. Mm -hmm. Sadly, you know? If he's still alive, if the money, the entire money to raise the kids are in his account, he does not have trust, no insurance, she would later blame the child that you are the one that brought us here. Um, That's where you see the abuse extending. I'm not just busy. I'm trying to. I, I get you. I'm trying to make sense of a of very what, difficult yes, situation. Yes, I get you. Because if you if you have if you sit with them, or you handle one of such, you will be tilting towards their pain uh, or their fears. So this woman has a fear. We must, as a society, first of all, take care of it, mm. so that she stands as the witness that she is. You don't want to have a witness that will come to court after the prosecution have done all their work. She be doing. No, <laughs> didn't happen. Not. You know, you don't want that. You want a bold woman who will say, my husband or not, he, the father or not, but what he did to my child, I will stand against it. Because our fear is not that two, in two years, well, where, how will I fund their fees? Well, how how will she go to school? How come we don't ever put the, the children first in this kind of conversation? Thank you. Why, Nobody ever now. really talks about this children because it's all about how We're society will yeah, so. No, the child too has been defiled. Morayo, mm -hmm. so um, I look at animals for instance, right? And they will say, I've gone again. <laughs> and I see the, 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 um, the mother hen, when you pick the little chick. I tried it when I was growing up. The chasing I got. The mother hen was practically flying to catch me. I didn't know what was happening. So I just held the chick and I was running, yeah! And this mother hen was chasing me. Till somebody now shouted, leave the, leave the uh, chicken, leave the chick, leave the chick. And now threw the chick before the mother hen settled. And I see how they go because in my place then we had this open field where um, eagles would be flying from time to time. I know hawks rather. You know hawks eat these um, yes. chicks. Mm -hmm. So I see how the mothers protect their chicks when the hawks are coming. You see them screaming and shouting and using their feather to, you know, protect and... A woman who bets a child, who, does, who needs society to tell her how to protect her child, whether she's hungry or not, is not an excuse. We need to start you know, helping people to understand that your first job is not just to give belle bono. If you know that your own is to give belle bono, as the belle enter, just the bonam, the bonam, the bonam, that's all you're about. You are not fit to be a mother. A mother should protect. In the face of hunger, the mother will say, take me instead and leave my children. But what I'm hearing is, hey, because I don't know how to feed them. What do you do your hands? Hmm. You can't walk. Uh, but you, you can't beg. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on now. You cannot walk. You cannot beg. You cannot sweep. You cannot do anything. So make sure, first of all, that your children are sane around you. You want to rather stay in an abuse. That's because you don't even know the extent of that abuse on the child. We have a lot of young people who have been abused, whose lives just scattered. We don't, their parents don't know the extent of the damage. They excuse it with, eh, you know his uncle, this person now, he's the one offending for us, there's nothing we can do, suck it up. And then these children go years with trauma. We're not thinking about that. We're thinking about our survival. Uh, you cannot drink, Gary. Okay. Obi Adjulu, I will go back to, it's, you see, Wait, you can it's not. for a second. I have Balaji to hold it for a while. Okay. Well, Aji, thanks for calling. You're live. You're live. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so this case you talked about, uh, we have a case attack. I got here today. The woman is involved, was asking for advice. Of course, the perpetrator did not have that. There was, uh, there was no penetration, but there was abuse in, in terms of touching and co from the father to the daughter. Now they've separated a long time, uh, for two years now. But the woman now came to us for advice because she said, no, this guy is just going for free and he does nothing on these children. She's trying her best, but she's making a little money. That what she wants is that she wants to get a lawyer and they'll get the man seated with all the evidence. 
Now he's going to sign that you are going to provide for these children to they go to university and everything, you take care of them and everything, or I take this evidence to court and you go to jail. That's the route she wants to go because they are no more married. But the guy is just gallivanting around, he's not taking care of the children. She's the one running around now and all her efforts, you know, she's just earning a little. And that's what she came to us, you know, for advice. So what do you, what would you advise for a woman like this to do? She's not married. She doesn't even want to think that they are still for three years now. So somebody like that, what would you advise her to do? Yeah, thank you very much, Bolaji, for your comments. Yeah, like, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't clear. clear, yeah. Mm, I didn't really hear. Sure, our viewers probably heard her, but we didn't hear her very well yeah. in the studio. So uh, let, let me add something quickly. Before we uh, wait, so we know the needs that the society needs to come up, you know, some of the solutions we've talked about, the welfare system, all of that, we need to start holding our governments and lawmakers accountable so that we have these systems. But before the systems come, is, is it, we, we need to start changing the mindsets of parents Wait, but who you, decide you have to bear children. You have to agree that it is not every woman that has a child is a mother. Not all mm. women. Mm. Sorry, it's mentally I forgot. Today, mother. Oh, if I you forgot. don't agree to that, mm. then you cannot understand this woman. Mm. She, is, I, I, I've seen a lot of women abandon their children mm. now. Without remorse. True. You know, they don't care. Yeah. So it, it, it's, uh, uh, giving birth is not, doesn't natu make you a make natural you mother. mother. Yeah. It is what you have inside mm. that will make you a mother. Mm -hmm. You know? We have it's, to, we have, it's we not have all to. chickens, but all, no. all hens that give birth. Unfortunately, we have to wrap yeah. up. I know Some we eat. I'd yeah. love for us to continue this, com this, this conversation because yeah. our guests are in. We are, we are trying to start this um, topic so that we can, you know, to, uh, make up time for... I guess, but I'm told our guest is in now, so we have to wrap up. We'll pick it up again. It's, a, it's an important topic because our job really is to continue to sensitize and re educate and reorientate Nigerians on to making right choices and better choices going forward. So I think we have to pause this for now. But let me go on a short break and we come back. We're bringing our guest, one of our guests for today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.